the only two pairs of shoes you need to travel the world indefinitely are one pair of sandals and one pair of closed-toed shoes. More specifically, the only two pairs I need to travel in warm and hot climates are one pair of minimal sandals and one pair of ballet flats. I've been using this combination for about the last five years and it's been working really well for me. Our family travels long term. We're currently in beautiful Malaysia. We tend to travel for about a year at a time, then go home to Hawaii for about a year. But even when we're back in our home base, we don't expand our wardrobes or buy a bunch of shoes. I still only have two or three pairs even when I'm back home. Now, obviously, I haven't been wearing the exact same two pairs of shoes for those past five years. I've tried a variety of brands, both for the minimalist sandals and for the ballet flats. Here in a bit, I'll give you a rundown of which ones I've tried and how they worked for me. Before I go any further, I wanna stop and say a big thank you to Feel Grounds for the shoes that George and I are wearing in this video. Thank you so much for letting us try out your brand. We're really loving them. Now let's get on with it. First of all, what are minimalist or barefoot sandals and why does our family choose to wear them? Some of the features that make up a minimalist or barefoot shoe is that they have a thin, flexible sole. They're zero drop, and what that means is that the heel is not raised at all. Not just that they're not a high heel, but there's no difference in the height from the back of the shoe to the front of the shoe. There's a lot of shoes out there that you wouldn't think of as heels or high heels, but that don't meet the zero drop criteria. They do have a little bit of a raised heel, anywhere from little girls shoes often have heels on them or if you think about athletic shoes basketball shoes there's often quite a difference from the front to the back of the sole they have a wide toe box to allow your toes to splay out as wide as they need to be and when you're talking about sandals they secure onto your foot so not like a flip-flop that causes your toes to grab onto and hold onto the shoe. If you're looking at minimal sandals, they'll have some way to wrap around your ankle. Basically, when you're talking about a barefoot shoe, you're trying to stay as close to walking barefoot as possible. We believe that our feet function, that they work, and we want the shoe to protect the bottom of our foot while not getting in the way of the function of our feet. Thinking about it this way, the main purpose of shoes is to protect the bottom of your feet from thorns, sharp objects, broken glass, maybe a really hot surface. With our one-year-old who's just now starting to wear shoes, that's often why he wears them is so he doesn't burn the bottom of his feet. But we don't want the shoes to interfere with your interaction with the ground. We want your feet to be able to bend and contour and hold on to the surfaces that you're walking on. Why minimalist shoes? The main reason our family made the switch was for our health. It was just a secondary benefit that it turns out they are great for traveling. Since we usually always wear our closed-toed shoes on airplane travel days, that leaves us packing just our minimalist sandals. So they're super lightweight, they're super thin, they take up barely any space in our luggage. If you are traveling one bag only or carry-on only, it's a great way to go to just have a thin pair of sandals to pack. They're healthier in the sense of allowing your body better alignment and better natural movement. So when you're wearing anything with an elevated heel, your body starts compensating one way and then the other and then the other and then the other until you're just totally out of whack. So by having a completely flat shoe, it allows you to stand up correctly. I haven't worn heels since I had my first baby. I didn't like the idea of wearing heels while also wearing my baby in a carrier. Also, it allows you to move in a more natural manner when you have a thin, flexible shoe. We can really see this with our kids. I love watching my kids at the playground and just see how either being actually barefoot or wearing very flexible shoes allows their feet to kind of hang on to what they're climbing on, to bend and contour. I notice a lot with my one-year-old that when he stands, his little toe spreads way out to the side. So that's where it comes in to play having a wide toe box. I think almost any shoe, if I put it on his feet, it would restrict and squeeze his toes together. He wouldn't get that same natural motion of being able to balance with his little toes way out. Now, if you can find a pair of minimalist shoes that are very flexible 
and that fit your feet correctly, they can be extremely comfortable shoes to wear for a long day out walking, while sightseeing, while traveling. The key is to find that perfect fit. And that's one reason I especially like sandals is there is no toe box, no end of the shoe for your foot to hit up against. And so that's one less thing that could cause discomfort. Your toes are really free in sandals. If you have a comfortable pair of shoes that you can wear all day, every day, then you don't need a whole bunch of pairs. I think often on vacation, people are bringing backup shoes or switching their shoes because their feet hurt because they have shoes that are not comfortable and they need shoes that rub a different part of their feet. But if your shoes are comfortable, you could just keep wearing those shoes. And don't worry about, well, then I'm gonna be wearing the same two pairs of shoes in all my vacation photos. Trust me, I went back through years of photos trying to find pictures of me wearing my travel shoes. And most of the time I was either barefoot at the beach, barefoot at home, or only a few times you could actually see what shoes were on my feet. So don't worry about it from that stance either. It's good to either write down, list out, or think through in your head all the different activities you're going to be doing. And then you need at least one of your pairs of shoes to work for each of those activities. So those activities could include walking, going to the beach, going on boats, hiking, Perhaps you're somebody who exercises and goes to the gym, and in that case, you may need a pair of athletic shoes. Me personally, I think I went to the gym once on our travels. Most packing lists recommend at least three pairs of shoes, and the pair that I'm leaving off is like the athletic tennis shoes. I think they make you look like a tourist when you're traveling somewhere like in Europe, where it's just not so common to wear your athletic wear out and about during the day. Sometimes packing lists also recommend a pair of flip-flops to wear places like the showers if you're staying in hostels. For me, if I had a pair of sandals that could get wet, I'd just wear those in the shower instead. One other factor is to consider drying time. So if you're going to be somewhere that's raining or you might get your feet wet while you're out on an adventure, if you're gonna have to wear those shoes again the next day, you're gonna wanna think about, are they going to dry overnight? Even if it might be rainy and super humid, or are they okay to wear even though they're wet? I've had quite a bit of time to put this combination of sandals and flats to the test, and it has taken me through all the settings, situations, and activities that I've encountered while traveling and while back home in between. Currently, sandals are what I wear most of the time, 90% of the time, maybe even more. That's because I have sandals that are really comfortable. Previously, when I had sandals and then my Teats Ballet flats that did fit me well, I was doing about 50-50, about half the time in the sandals and half the time in the flats. For the ballet flats, there are certain situations that I really like those for. First of all, I always wear them on airplane travel days. I like to wear socks and the flats going through the airport because we often remove our shoes at security, so I like to have those socks on. Plus, it can get really cold on the airplane. They keep my feet warmer than sandals would. I also like ballet flats for city walking, Bangkok, Tokyo. It helps me blend in more in those settings, not look so much like a tourist. I also appreciate closed-toed shoes during the monsoon season where it's raining a ton and I'd rather my feet stay somewhat dry instead of having like mud oozing between my toes wearing sandals. Your feet getting wet? Dry your feet. Your feet okay? Yeah, I purposely wore closed-toed shoes so I wouldn't get wet toes. Another situation the flats are great for is again to wear them with socks to have easy to slip off shoes when visiting temples. For instance, in Thailand, we often visit Buddhist temples and you need to remove your shoes before you enter. So slip on, slip off shoes and something you can wear socks with are great for that. Flats are also nice to pair with a dress when we're going out for a nicer lunch or out to dinner. I've even worn flats while traveling and attending a trade show. They've even taken me through things like a wedding and a funeral. I'm gonna go down a list of the various shoes that I've used in this combination while traveling. The key being to find a brand and style of shoes that fit your unique feet correctly. And the challenge for me is that a lot of minimalist shoes run quite wide. They're trying to allow enough room for your foot to spread out. However, I have narrow feet. I've not been wearing minimalist shoes my whole life. I used to wear point shoes in my childhood, a lot of dance shoes in my past. So I have had to try quite a few different shoes to try to find minimalist shoes that fit my particular feet. First up, a pair of Soft Star Solstice sandals were what helped me first transition to minimalist shoes. 
Thank you so much to Softstar. Years ago, I got that pair to review on an old blog and it helped me gradually change the type of footwear I was wearing. At first, I was really hesitant because we were living in Bangkok at the time and the sidewalks were really broken and uneven and I was afraid I was gonna stub my toes. But pretty quickly, I learned that by being able to feel the ground and feel the surface underneath my feet, while also just being more aware of my surroundings with all of my senses, sight, hearing, everything, that I was able to be comfortable and walk safely in very thin soled shoes. I ended up wearing those sandals for years through so many different situations. Ones I might not really recommend. I wore them while wearing my baby in a carrier and hiking up Diamond Head. They are not recommended as hiking shoes. They don't have much traction, but I did it just fine. Technically, they're not really supposed to get wet, but I wore them to the beach in Hawaii quite a few times. I also owned a pair of Crocs T-strap sandals. They're not technically barefoot shoes as they did have a tiny bit of a heel to the sole, but I liked that they were very flexible. I could get them wet. They were kind of a gold bronze color, so they went with any outfits in my wardrobe. Most recently, I've been wearing a pair of Earth Runners Circadian Lifestyle sandals, and I've had those for three years, wore them in combination with some other shoes the first year, and I've worn them almost exclusively for the past two years until just recently when I got a new pair of shoes. So those circadian earth runners, I always fidgeted with the strap at the back. I do have a thin heel. And even though I did the different tricks that was supposed to snug it up on my heel, I always kind of had to adjust it every single time I put them on. So I had this love-hate relationship with them. They kind of annoyed me, but at the same time, they took me through everything. I hiked in them. I went on boat trips with them where I had to jump in the water to get off the boat. I would wear them in the water at the beach. I wore them walking all over the world. So those earth runners, they did serve me really well. And if you're looking for an extremely versatile sandal, then that is a good option if you want something that can work for walking, hiking, and water scenarios. They technically could even be used for trail running. They did have excellent traction on the bottom, which is great for hiking or just walking. And I chose a color that again, could go with anything. However, my earth runners are really showing wear now after three years. So it was time to update my footwear. I reached out to Phil Grounds and they were so kind to send both me and George new pairs of shoes, as well as some swag. Our kids were like, hey, where's our new shoes? While Field Grounds is working on developing a kid's line of shoes, it might be about a year or so before those come out. I first heard about Field Grounds Seaside Sandals in a minimalist footwear group that I'm in. Somebody asked about them and everybody who had them replied that they loved them, that they were great, they were comfortable, and it was like, those sound great. I'm currently updating my minimalist travel wardrobe that I've been wearing for a few years, and I just wanted something that looked a little bit more stylish. I really liked it with Phil Grounds. They offer their shoes in a variety of colors. I chose the blush pink, which I think is really nice because hey, just because you're traveling doesn't mean you have to wear all black. The particular seaside sandals that I have are made with natural materials. The straps are cotton and the footbed is cork, which is super comfortable to walk on. They have an adjustable heel strap, which is really easy, just a Velcro closure, and a little bit of elastic there to help aid in that good snug fit on the heel. These seaside sandals are perfect for walking and sightseeing, what we mostly do right now as a family. They are not meant for wearing in the water or for hiking. Field Grounds also offers a selection of closed toe shoes, like the original mesh pair my husband's wearing. For ballet flats, my first introduction was a pair of butterfly twist black ballet flats that I found at Terminal 21 Mall in Bangkok. They're really cool because they fold closed, so super compact. If you wanna throw them in your purse, take them with you. Looking back at the style now, they were not exactly minimalist. They didn't have a wide toe box, but they were really comfortable to wear. Those butterfly twist flats were not the best quality and they fell apart after about a year. I did wear them in monsoon season and get them quite wet. As far as ballet flats go, the most comfortable ones I've ever had were my teaks. I had a pair of black leather ones. They fit excellent. The only, only issue they gave me is that my big toe did hit up against the end. So after a long day out walking, like when we were in Bangkok and we'd be walking all day until the evening, I'd get home and my big toe would be sore from hitting the end of the shoe. But other than that, with my teaks, there was no break in time. They never rubbed. I never got a single blister with them. 
so they were excellent travel shoes. While preparing for our current trip, I also tried Soft Star Ballerine Flats. I thought they were gonna be the perfect shoes for me. I love the brand. I love the sandals I had in the past. My daughters had multiple pairs of their shoes as well. However, they just weren't made for my feet. They tend to run wide and I have narrow feet. So even trying a couple different sizes, I just couldn't get any of the ballerines that fit for me. Currently, I have the Zero Shoes Leather Flats. They do make a separate knit style. The ones that I have, they fit the length of my foot. I couldn't go a smaller size because then it'd be too short, but they're too wide, they're too loose. They can even just like flop right off of my feet while I'm wearing them. So they weren't the best choice. I do have to wear socks with them to be able to wear them for an extended amount of time. I wear a seven and a half in women's shoes and that's what works for me in most of these brands, but normally they do have something you can print out to measure your foot, to choose the right size. I will even email back and forth with brands to make sure I'm ordering the right size. And even then it just comes down to if that shoe fits the shape of your foot. I hope that helps just to hear a quick rundown of what I've tried. Everybody has different feet, so we may need to try a few different pairs to find our perfect ensemble. Right now, I am really enjoying my cute new field grounds, and I'm hoping someday to replace my ballet flats with a more comfortable pair. When you're preparing for a vacation, a trip, or if you're preparing for long-term travel like we're doing, you might be gone a year around the world or even more or indefinitely, give yourself time to shop for the right shoes because it can definitely be trial and error to find the ones that look flattering, but most importantly, feel comfortable. And especially since our family likes minimalist barefoot shoes, those are kind of a specialty item and they can be tricky to find in person in stores. They're often for ordering online only. And so I will order a pair, try it on, return it, try another size, <laughs> try it on, return it, order from another brand, try it on. This most recent trip, I ended up with a pair that didn't fit correctly and so I'm hardly wearing them. It's like I practically just wear one pair of shoes all the time. So give yourself enough time that you can go through that process and find the right ones. What about you? Do you think you could get by with just two pairs of shoes indefinitely while traveling or while home? Could you do it? Let me know in the comments below, what shoes do you love to pack to take traveling? What are your favorite travel shoes? What are the most comfortable travel shoes you've ever worn? Or are you still searching?